Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here, and today we're going to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we're going to start taking a brief look at optimization inside of the Source Engine, specifically for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I already have Hammer open, we load it through the CSGO SDK found in the Tools section on Steam, and then Hammer World Editor. I have a small test level built out specifically to show some basic optimization I like to teach optimization early on as to not let bad habits form that will result in you spending days, hours, or weeks fixing issues that you didn't know you were creating earlier on. A quick tour of this level is a simple outside area, a small house with some windows, a room, and some props in the back here. Let's compile the level so we can take a look at it in game to see how everything's rendered. I'm compiling this using the full compile HDR only preset that's under the expert compiler. Here's our level in game. It's compiled exactly how we'd expect it to. If we take a trip into this room, we'll see our props. And there's really not much else to the level. I want to use a few cheat commands to help me visualize what's being rendered from when I'm standing where in my map. If I open the tilde key, type svcheats1, and then mat underscore wireframe1, I can see everything that's being rendered even if it's behind objects. From where I'm standing right now, the room with the props actually has the ceiling and floors being drawn. This is because of how the visibility engine has decided that I should be able to see that room. If we start to walk towards the room with the props, at some point they'll pop into existence. When this happens, the visibility engine has determined that where I'm standing now, these should be rendered. As I walk forward, this room has started to be rendered as well. If I step back here, it's gone. Even though I still can't see the room, the visibility engine thinks I should be able to see it and is rendering it. This means that it's using my computer's processing power to render this room even though the player can't see it. In fact, from where I'm standing, the entire outside is being drawn. I can't see any of that, but it's being drawn. On more populated and full levels, this will result in a large frame decrease, which will make your level perform poorly for most users. How does the visibility engine, or VVIS, determine what should be seen where? It does this by filling our level with what's called VIS leaves. These are essentially boxes that take up every usable spot in our map. We can visualize these inside Hammer and inside of Game. We can start by turning off wireframe, then typing mat leaf viz1. This blue box represents the current viz leaf that I'm in. When vviz processes, it determines what can this viz leaf see from all places. Since this viz leaf extends a large amount into this room, even when I'm back here, it is determined that everything in that far end of the box should be visible. It does this by determining a potentially visible set, or PVS. We can visualize our current PVS by using matleafviz3. This will turn on all of the viz leaves that vviz has determined we should be able to see. Everything in our map is associated to a viz leaf, and when it determines we can see that viz leaf, it renders that object. This is all fun and exciting information, but what does it really mean for you? It comes down to level performance and compile times. If your level is improperly optimized for viz, it can take upwards of infinite time. You can let it compile for a week and you'll still be waiting. Most levels should take under 20 minutes to complete viz on the proper settings. That is, not fast. We can use fast for testing, but it usually results in poor performance. A comparison of fast is as follows. As I stand right here, those props in the back room aren't being rendered. My compile setting for viz was normal instead of fast. And this is me standing in approximately the same position but rendered with fast visibility. These crates are now drawn even though they completely should not be. Normal viz does a much better job at determining what can and can't be seen. It does full passes on visibility, whereas fast only does one quick pass on visibility. It's all right to use fast visibility when you're testing your level layout, but you should never ship your level with fast viz. We can visualize the viz leaves inside of Hammer very easily by navigating to map and then load portal file. 
It'll ask us if we want to load the default portal file, to which we'll answer yes. Just like in game, all these blue boxes will be rendered. These are the viz leafs inside of the map. One thing you may notice is viz leafs are being split or chopped up automatically in areas where there are no brushes to conform around. Viz will automatically split viz leafs on a grid of 1024 and on these teal lines in the middle. We're not going to worry too much about that for now. Let's just see how many viz leaves we have. Press F9 to run the map and uncheck copy and light. We only want BSP and visibility. Click go. Once the compile is finished, we'll note 528 num portals. This is how the compile log will refer to the number of viz leaves in our level. Let's copy this output and save it to a text file for now. We'll refer back to this later after we do a few optimizations. The first optimization that we should do is the skybox. Right now, I have the cordon tool enabled to create essentially a boxed skybox. Some people will just create a hollow box around their level with the tool skybox texture. This is an improper way and very unoptimized way to have your level be enclosed in the skybox material. I'll unload the portal file by going to map, unload portal file, and then turn off the cordon tool. I'll then go to my texture browser and do a search for skybox and make the tool skybox texture my active material. I now want to zoom in on the outsides of my level and begin to build a box around the level that fits perfectly around it. The idea here is to leave as little empty extra space as possible so VVIZ can complete quicker and have the map be more optimized. In CSGO, we need the skybox to be taller so that way grenades can be thrown over buildings if you've ever worked in a different Source Engine game before, you may think that this is the wrong way to do the skybox, but since this is a gameplay over engine thing, we have to do it. Now that the skybox fits around our level like a turtle shell, let's compile it again and see how many num portals we have. Click Run Map and then Go. We have a vviz.exe crash. This is due to a leak. If we close the program and scroll up, we'll see that we have leaked entity light environment. We can close our compile log, click map, and then load point file. If it asks you to load the default point file, that means that you typically have a leak. Click yes, and then a red line will be drawn in our world and 2D views. We can fly over there and see that we have a leak. This is what I referred to in a previous video by the inside of our level being able to reach the outside. Since the inside can reach the outside, the visibility engine doesn't know how to test the visibility inside your level since it thinks everything is inside your level and that's not correct. So what we have to do here is block this leak from happening. We'll do this with a world brush to stop it from leaking out of the level. If we grab this skybox block right here, we can just pull it down until it seals up the hole. That looks like it's all sealed. We can compile again and see if we have a leak. That one worked out much better. If we take note at the amount of num portals that we have now, we have 167. If we look back at our other compile log, before with the box skybox, we had 528. This is a huge saving in num portals. Num portals are objectively a lower is better sort of ordeal. There is no standard amount of num portals that your level will have. But typically, if it's over 7,000, it's too many and you'll need to reduce it. Not using the boxed skybox is the first way that we reduce num portals to increase visibility optimization in our map. What do we do if our level's populated with world brush objects that are decals, such as railings or pavilions, spikes, stairs? I'll press U to unhide some brushwork that I've previously created. You may notice that no draw is on the top here. If we position our camera, we can see that that face is unseen from all player angles, so I don't want that face drawn, just like the top of these buildings here. We can't see that, so why should we render it? This is why we always build our level in no draw first. If I compile the level again with all these detailed world objects, we'll see that the number of num portals that we have is 5,768. The compile log also is not moving quickly before it took about a second that wasn't sped up. Now it's just hanging here at zero and three dots. I'll exit the compile, 
and we can take a look at the num portals in Hammer. If we click map, load portal file, and then yes, we can see that this is essentially a monstrosity of visibility and it makes sense why it won't compile. We want to take all the objects that aren't important to visibility and tell the Viz engine to not care about them. To do this, we use function detail. I mentioned previously in the prefab tutorial that small things should just be func detail and I left it at that. These objects down here are spikes. They can never block our view. If I turn off the portal file and I select these spikes and press control T to turn them into an entity by default as a function detail, I'll start another compile and then cancel it when it hangs here. I'll load the portal file once again. We can see that all of those blue lines no longer form a monstrosity over these spikes. This is because function detail tells the visibility engine, don't care about me. I'm a detail, I can't block the view, I should have no impact on visibility. We should do the same thing to this structure here, along with my stairs over here. But what is the proper way to create stairs? Let's turn this ramp into a staircase. Let's start by unloading the portal file. I'll texture the top of this with no draw. And then I'll press control H to hide everything but the selected object. I only care about this because I'm going to build stairs on it. I can also unload my point file from earlier since that's no longer relevant. I'll press shift B to select the block tool and create a new brush. I want this stair to have a rise of 8 and a run of 28. This is sort of an odd stair shape, but it lines up on grid with my stair. I'll press enter to create that block, and I'll opt to texture it with the dev textures. Hiding everything unselected once again, I can select this stair, hold shift, and just drag and make a copy. Now I can select both stairs, press ctrl G to group them, and create a few more copies very quickly. Then select all of those, group them, and make some more copies until I have enough stairs to reach the bottom. There's two extra stairs, so I can use the clipping tool to clip those off. Now I'll select all of these stairs and press Ctrl T to turn them into a function detail. Lastly, we don't want these brushes to be colliding with each other, so grab the clipping tool and create a line at the bottom of the ramp going up to the top of the ramp. We want to keep the top of the stairs and clip the bottom off. Press enter to make the cut. If we resize these stairs, we can see that we have a ramp underneath and the stair detail object. Going back to 3D textured, if we pull this back here, and unhide the level, we now have a staircase. If we compile the level again, it's already done. We have 167 num portals. If we load the portal file, we can see that there's pretty much nothing here, and this is an acceptable amount of num portals in our level. Depending on the complexity of your level, this will look different to you, but as long as it's compiling quickly, you typically don't have to worry about it. Unloading the portal file, what would happen if we didn't have the ramp under these stairs? If I delete this ramp and then compile again, we'll have the same vviz crash as earlier. If we load the point file, we can see that the line goes right through the stairs. This is why we have to have a world brush underneath our stairs to help seal the level from leaks. At some point, you're going to go compile your level and you'll have a leak. You'll go to map and load point file, and you can see that the line goes right through a brush. But this is a brush, how can it go through it? Typically this happens because you've turned it into an entity. If we double click on this object to open up its object properties, we can see it's a function detail. If we press Control shift and W on our keyboard, it will turn it into a solid object. This means that it will stop leaks. Only solid objects will prevent leaks. We can visualize for ourselves what the visibility engine is seeing by using our viz groups. If we navigate over to the viz groups on the right, we can go to the auto tab. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. If we pull the window out, we can resize it and then dock it again. If we turn everything off and then turn on world geometry, 
This is how visibility will perceive our level. We can see that this is a very basic outline of our level, and that's how it should be for viz. Viz only cares about large, simple shapes that will typically result in block of visibility. If you toggle the auto selection off and then back on, your entire level will once again return to hammer. There is still quite a bit more to learn about optimization in Source Engine, but this quick look lays down the groundwork that you'll have to follow to start creating your level in an optimized way. Thanks for watching, don't forget to join us next time, and leave wall hacks in the chat.